our own needs based on some assessment data, but also from the survey that was done um, actually back in September, the end of September, by uh, surveying our teachers in terms of what they thought were their needs and for professional development. So um, our priority starting this year, of course, understanding teachers need support in math. They need support in the instruction of the California State Standards using our new program. Specifically in language arts, we were targeting three areas, close reading, argumentative writing, and collaborative conversations. Having students um, engage in academic discourse uh, every day, every subject, to build their knowledge. Another um, PBIS, positive school, culture, and climate, not just the PBIS, um, but also we have Olvaeus program, uh, anti-bullying, and restorative justice. And of course, um, this is the 21st century, and we need, do need to ratchet it up and power our <coughs> technology. This year, besides trainings, which we've always had, we put in some additional systems of support for professional development. One uh, that you've heard of quite a bit of is our academic coaching that we have. Um, we have, uh, for every two sites, um, an academic coach that's there available for teachers for their, for their own learning needs. It isn't, uh, administrators don't send in the coach to work on specific um, areas. The, it's up to the teacher to determine um, how they're going to be assisted by the coach. We also have, as uh, Mr. Dillinger pointed out, a uh, new system of grade level release collaborations with our super subs and these are full day collaborations <coughs> we have adopted a what's called a data teams process it's a very well defined protocol to be used district-wide for these meetings that look at priority standards look at what how um, to design an assessment that will identify mastery of that standard to work as a grade level to plan instruction um, and also um, collaborate then uh, on um, lesson activities. Sometimes they even get an opportunity to go visit other classrooms on what we call reflective, reflective learning walks. Another thing we started this year, we do have, as most districts in California do, um, uh, a number of intern and provisional interns. And to support these teachers, besides having the instructional coaches, the academic coaches at the, the sites, we have um, what we call boot camps. Our new teacher, teacher on special assignment, um, along with our academic coaches, offer twice a month um, two to three hour um, evening and weekend sessions on some very basic things from classroom <coughs> management, supporting them with um, report cards, tips for parent conferencing, lesson design, uh, a variety of things like that. And we also this year, in order to assist our teachers to have real clarity in their targets, identify uh, language arts and math priority standards. So those are systems to, to support it. This summer, we had three different math institutes. One, the five-day institute was only open to our teachers in our math and science project grant. But the other two, one, the bottom one, the Eureka Math, but CSCE, -C -C -E, <coughs> Eureka Math, Linda um, was one of the um, facilitators of that. But, so the bottom two were open to all teachers, and many of our teachers went to both. Uh, we have three negotiated staff development days uh, on our calendar, and all three of them were. Um, dedicated to math this year, supporting teachers. And um, you'll see on August 31st, we have this module overview and planning, which is really the kind of activity that teachers are asking for. Linda repeated it in January at the end of Christmas break, or winter break, by inviting teachers by grade level to come in to look at the upcoming module and identify really what were, um, first of all, take a look at the assessment, how they're going to um, identify mastery, and then really take a look at those um, challenges for teaching and the challenges for learning that students were going to face with that content there, and to do some planning together. 
that is um, overwhelmingly something that we heard teachers want more of. Okay, and then again, our academic coaches are doing demonstration lessons. They're available for consultations. They're doing um, lesson planning. Uh, we have the grade level overviews and collaborative planning that are starting in spring with our academic coaches. They're providing that. And then now, one our, our math grant person, uh, Lee Hao, is doing at each grade level end of module scoring calibration sessions so the teachers can come after school, after by their grade level, bring student work, look at the rubric, and meet with colleagues and discuss. And we are um, compensating the teachers for attending these sessions. In language arts, along our three areas, we have um, site training going on. We've had during weekends and uh, winter break, some writing trainings. Um, and then with uh, positive behavior interventions and supports, we have 13 schools that have advanced in trainings. It's all very much ongoing. Restorative justice, we've continued trainings. Two schools have been <laughs> added this year for all various bullying prevention, Roosevelt and Loma Vista, and we actually have five schools that are interested in starting it next year. And we continue with PlayWorks, our pro-social um, uh, recreation at recess and also in our after-school best program. We do offer, this is not just certificated, we have um, in all of these uh, classified um, folks are involved in these trainings as well because uh, this isn't necessarily strictly instructional, it's school-wide. And then Monica is going to say a word about what's been going on with technology. Yes, good evening. Um, uh, on Tech Tuesdays, uh, we are, there are once a month um, staff development sessions that we hold at different schools around the district. And tomorrow, actually, is at the Tibidet School from 3.30 to 5. We're going to be um, covering the topic of the recommended digital literacy and technology skills that support Common Core standards, and um, that will be tomorrow. Will be the first of uh, three. So the uh, the next two will be part two and part three of that. Um, and then uh, previous to that, we've done um, other skill building in technology, whether it's iPads or Chromebooks and or multimedia, which was the last one just before the one uh, that last month before tomorrow. We also had um, Tech University, and that was a big Saturday event. It was very well attended, and um, we had um, multi, multiple types of sessions um, during the morning time, and then it, an ed camp for the afternoon, which was basically the participants selected what topic they wanted to know more about, and then regrouped themselves into those different sessions, and then did a further study um, into the afternoon uh, for those topics. Um, we also have technology lead teachers at um, across the district. Um, we, I work with them um, uh, in terms of their support, providing support to their colleagues. Um, and we, uh, we beta test uh, different tools with them. We um, help them to uh, be tech leaders and innovators at their school sites and also um, as part of their um, work, they are uh, open to having um, visits from their colleagues or from um, other schools to um, you know, kind of model uh, technology integration into their curriculum. And then okay, there are coaches that are available on site and do demonstration lessons and work with teachers on integrating technology in their classrooms and also um, assisting sometimes with something seemingly as si simple, but it isn't simple at all. It's difficult management and that's, you know, rotating students through uh, a classroom um, computer um, station area um, so that uh, students have access to different tutorials. Imagine Learning, System 44, um, they help um, get that rolling. Okay. Thank you. Um, then we have a, a new project coming up to end the year, and this is our June Summer Institute after school ends. These are our initial plans for it. As you can see, we're starting on Monday with everyone um, invited to, it's called Q, 
which stands for Computer Using Educators, a nonprofit organization. It truly, truly is state of the art um, for professional development with technology, and I'll be talking uh, quite a bit more about that later on in the agenda when we take a look at the contract. Every day following that, you can see that um, different grade levels have different um, sessions to go to. We do have Linda Dilger and Denise Green from the county office that will, um, on the Tuesday, work with kindergarten on math content and planning. And then the next day um, is grade level reflection and planning. That will be led by administrators and also our academic coaches for the planning. They'll be facilitating grade level planning. The other portion of this that's pretty significant is we're going to get started on some very, very, very important training on the English language arts and English language development framework and also with some planning and that is with Laura Cortez from the Monterey County Office of Education followed up by uh, another a day afterwards of more uh, grade level reflection and planning about what's happened the previous year and what are some targets they need to set. First and second kind pretty much follows that, the kind of flip-flop. They start with ELA, ELD, and end with math content. The difference here, if you look at third through fourth and fifth through sixth, RQ, they're putting together a custom, uh, thanks to Monica, who did some talking with some people, a custom institute. And it's going to be based on, it's called PBL, Get used to that one, project-based learning. And that is where students are using the devices themselves to um, be creative, to collaborate with others, to communicate their ideas. We have thousands of devices in classrooms, and we need to make sure that those are being used every day by students, not just for tutorials, but to create. And so for third and fourth, and fifth and sixth, their day following Q is going to be for planning how to increase the use of technology in their classrooms. Okay? So Lori, can you come back just for sure. a second? This is a really exciting opportunity for teachers to participate in five days of professional development. Um, they will be paid and they will be paid at their per diem rate, which is um, a new thing. <laughs> for our district, and so um, I think for the board, if you can, to mark down on your calendars, I don't know what the date, what's the date on Monday? The 6th. 6th. Six. 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 Oh my goodness. That is going to be, I mean, it is going to be a rock star cube um, presentation. It is going to be um, the state of the art uh, folks coming uh, that are QQ. Right now is uh, usually has two conferences in our state, um, and one in the fall, one in the spring. And teachers just love. If anybody's ever gone to Q, they want to go to Q. Anytime there is a Q conference, it is the most exciting place to be, and we're really, really excited that we're going to be able to bring some of the top um, level people from Q um, to present on the sixth. And the fact that we're going to be able to carry through the theme um, around the integration of technology around project-based learning um, really is an exciting place to be. As you heard um, Janet Sparks speak this evening about units of study. Units of study allow a, a, a lot of flexibility and creativity around um, using content area um, information. So you could take the social studies, you could take the science um, concept and knowledge and infuse that into um, a unit of study using the literacy standards. And so I'm really <coughs> excited about this. So cool. <laughs> it, it is really innovative, really inspirational, and I really encourage you to be there. And it is called, there are rock star camps. <coughs> and where is it going to be? It undoubtedly will be at Barondo Meadows, our go to location. <laughs> Okay, and not one of the other <coughs> cool things about this, besides sending out 10 of their best and brightest lead sessions, they work with five of our lead teachers, our lead tech leads, so they bring, incorporate them into this institute or rock star camp. 
um, to be teacher leaders. So it's also not just building the capacity of our classroom teachers, it's building the capacity of our teacher leaders. I'm gonna, and this is an infra um, commercial break here. But um, because of Monica's um, connection with Q, um, I'll just give you an example. On Wednesday, well, that's what, two days from now? Two days from now, why don't you stand up and tell us what's going to happen on Wednesday? Um, as part of the CISC uh, Symposium, the yeah. Curriculum Instruction Steering Committee um, Symposium. And that's, that event is happening in Monterey. Um, the uh, Q organization is hosting a Student Voices Day, a day in which students, uh, panels of students, will get to speak to curriculum leaders who are attending the, the CISC Symposium. And so uh, we were one of three um, districts selected to uh, assemble a group of students <laughs> from four different schools. Uh, and um, so we are going to take um, six students to uh, the symposium and do the student voices on Wednesday. And we will be there all day and our kids are going to be having real life 21st century experiences with slideshows that they've, they've created and they are presenting and then they will take uh, some set question and answers and then they will take um, open question and answers from the audience, from, from the adults in the room. Um, the best and the brightest minds of who are steering curriculum at different schools and different districts. So our kids are going to uh, share uh, their ex experience and their ideas and um, hopefully plant those seeds uh, in the adults who will make a difference uh, across the nation. So we will send you that link and you can watch the student uh, voices videos. Yes. Um, and <coughs> it's really cool that our students, so there will be thousands of people at this uh, symposium and our kids get to be on the stage and be, um, get to be on that forefront of showing what they're doing using technology. So it's really a grand opportunity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So just taking a little bit of a peek uh, to, to next year. Uh, next year is very much in the planet, planning stage, but we do know um, from what we've heard from teachers that they want to make sure that they have an increase in opportunities for grade level teacher collaboration and planning. And so on all of our negotiated staff development data, we will increase the amount of time that is actually for collaborative planning and not necessarily the in-seat training. There is in-seat training that's needed. Teachers do need to learn about new content, specifically, as we'll see, with the English language arts, the new ELD framework. Um, we also need to have an increase in those grade level release days. We were all, that's with the super subs. We were only able to provide every grade level with two this year because we, can all, we were only able to hire eight um, of these grade level release subs to go around the district for this. We hope next year um, at least to hire 16 so we can double that. Self-directed professional development, that's working with our coaches, that's choosing to, go, you know, asking, okay, I want to do this, I'd like to go to this conference, I'd like to go to this training. We need to make sure that our teachers have a choice to um, identify their own paths that they want to go down for increasing their um, skills. And then we really, this, we really need to look in and investigate and add to our menu of professional development, online professional development, which is on demand anytime PD for teachers at home. Um, we once upon a time did have a um, platform for this. It was called PD360, and um, we did not continue with that contract, but we need to look back into um, ways that we can do this. Um, it, it can be successful. Okay, so in math, again, it's just that we know that what the teachers want to continue doing with the module overviews and collaborative planning sessions. Again, huge priority is meeting the needs of English learners. Designated ELD best practices in the framework, and also taking a look at what's happening in foundational reading. Um, one of the things we want to really do is make sure that we're working hard to support the implementation of Footsteps to Brilliance. We're hearing great things about it from our earlier practitioners. And also up here, really putting together a professional development plan in Spanish language arts for our dual immersion teachers. Um, 
speaking of language arts, uh, in all of this, we know that we will be doing some piloting next year for um, two programs that we are considering for adoption, and we need to train and support those <coughs> teachers. We also need to provide training and support for our teachers who will be developing units of study. Underneath positive school culture and climate, um, we will continue with all these, continue to strengthen them. Uh, we will have one school that enters Tier 1 next year, our newest school, uh, Veranda Dia. <coughs> and then all of our other schools will be either going to Tier 2 or Tier 3. Continuing with restorative justice. And when I did this um, PowerPoint, there were four additional sites bringing proposals to implement OVEAS to their staff. That's the anti-bullying program, but as of today, it's five. So um, again, that isn't something that an administrator uh, is cite in order to do something like this. It is transformational for culture and climate, so we need to make sure that the whole site is on board for this. And then technology, as Monica has mentioned, um, going and really helping our teachers with grade level uh, scope and sequence of skills in specific areas and continuing with project-based learning using technology. Well, the only thing I wanted to add about the project-based learning pieces is, is there are several schools that are already doing that, and they're using oh, sure. the next generation science standards, mm -hmm. um, and so that's a perfect opportunity to weave in um, the new standards as we're getting exposed to them. Mm -hmm. Questions? Okay, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> well, let me go first. <laughs> first of all, it's very impressive, and thank you so much for that. Um, very challenging what we're attempting to do. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what do we have available that's going to help new teachers develop in the areas of like um, classroom management, sure. um, student engagement? These are the things I think that we're finding um, are lacking in some of the, the newer uh, teachers that, and we're ending up losing that resource because of the the fact that we have to make quick decisions about them in the first couple of years. Yeah. Um, so what is it that we're doing for that? It, it's a really good question. This year, um, what's happened is, again, we've added the boot camps. Now, um, the personnel, or HR department, when um, teachers are assigned to sites, they, are, they have designated mentors that are people who are on staff who essentially volunteer to help guide them. But that really needs to be, in my opinion, beefed up and really given some meat. And one of the proposals that I have for next year is that we really do something with our, our interns, not our interns and our provisional um, interns. The same thing we do for our teachers that go through a credential program and our beginner teachers. They go through an induction program. Um, to clear their credential. And they have a designated support provider who receives a stipend, who works with them um, and helps them through different activities that they need to to clear their credential. But they also um, are there once a, an hour a week to meet with them and to answer their questions. And we need to do not just that, a little bit more. And so for next year, for our teachers coming in um, with the, that are interns, we are looking at um, implementing a support provider network, um, creating a job position um, that teachers would apply for um, and receive a stipend to actually work as mentors to these teachers for and providing um, feedback. They go in, they observe them. Right now, our coaches are providing that, but they they need um, a big buddy a person that is designated to support them. And so that is definitely a big part of what we need to do next year. And I'll be working with human resources on that. Another additional um, source that we use is uh, our CalTeach program, mm -hmm. uh, from which some of our, in our temps and our interns participated in, um, runs a summer program. And that's where we even got the idea about the boot camp. Mm -hmm. Um, they run a summer program where our students get to be the recipients of um, um, their teaching. But the intent for CalTeach is really to integrate and to um, give the, the teachers that experience of teaching for the first time. And 
they have the students, but they also, afterwards, after, um, I guess, each day or each week, they go back and they review class. This is really heavily on classroom management, yes. lesson plan, writing, and then the pacing pieces, student engagement, teaching specific strategies. And um, that's what we try to model our, our boot camp around. But also, I think that's, that's a grand opportunity. So we were able to choose from the CalTeach program those teachers who we, you know, were recommended um, with um, higher levels of success. So I think I have an appointment next week, so I'm thinking they're probably going to talk about summer programs. Mm -hmm. That's another additional uh, professional right. on the ground, get real, this is what it really feels like, and then you have this whole element of support um, from CSUMB, the CalTeach program, around um, how do I improve on those day-to-day -day interactions. And I don't they remember have how many weeks is it? Is it eight weeks? It, it was last summer. You know, it was six weeks, it was six and weeks. So it was four days a week with the students and then the fifth day of yes, Friday okay. was for them to debrief in their classwork and the demonstrations and, 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 and things like that. So yeah, it really is and that's um, for our interns, Cal State Teacher, other university programs, they also work with um, their field work supervisors who come in and do observations and give them feedback and they take, do on a blended learning online coursework with some classwork. <coughs> Ms. Ish? Uh, okay. Uh, special education. Mm -hmm. How do they fit into uh, like your summer institute or the staff development that you, professional development, do they go in at a certain grade level? Do they have their own parallel uh, professional development? Are they, when it comes to collaboration, do they get together throughout the district or do they stay at their school sites? How, how does special little, education staff development work? A little bit of both. Um, okay. We are having, uh, when Mr. Dillinger and I were speaking about the grade level release times, we are doing, um, or have done grade level re release with our um, special day class teachers so that they could get together. I know that our teachers, for example, when we did the math institute, there wasn't a, a math institute day that was specifically a, for special education. It was um, by grade level. Um, you're looking at grade level materials. So, um, for example, um, if you were a special day class teacher, you might have gone to a second grade session. Uh, our RSP teachers, who are resource teachers, really, um, <coughs> besides understanding this grade level content, they need more of an overview of how the program runs in the general ed classroom so they can support their teacher. Um, I know Beatrice Chavez, as a director of special education or pupil personnel, had um, job-alike sessions uh, and professional development on that. But that is something that um, Ms. Vieira and I, for next year, definitely need to come up with a whole component about the needs of special education, not just on the California content standards, but on pra best practices in right. special okay. education. Yeah. Because, am, am I correct in assuming that special education is also under the common core? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I, it's got to look really different for them. So I'm wondering if mm -hmm. that is a focus. Well, it's going to have to be. Yeah. Okay. It's going to, yeah, ab absolutely. It has not, I wouldn't say necessarily, I wouldn't say that it has been a, a, a separate focus, it's been an inclusion. Um, and there's been some separate activities, but we haven't talked about them. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Any other questions? Uh, yes, from the public. Yes. Oh. Hello, my name is Rosie Sanchez, and I am the CSEA Chapter uh, Communications Officer. And um, the first thing I wanted to point out in your board packet, uh, the report to the Board of Trustees, that front page. Um, on there it says the 2015-16 professional development plan and 2016-17 professional development plan draft information. But in your analysis, it says this presentation includes draft plans for 2017-18 and I want a clarification on that because I heard nothing about 2017-18 tonight. Um, I don't know if that was a mistake or... It was a mistake. <laughs> okay. It was a mistake. Thank you very much. <laughs> And um, the other thing, um, I'd, I'd like to start off with the, um, 
by saying that I'm glad that the certificated staff has a plan for professional development and that additional training has been negotiated for the success of the district goals. However, I am disappointed to see the district's priorities for classified are not evident in the professional development plan. For example, uh, on the first slide, the, the title professional development doesn't say it's for certificated only. I'm assuming it's for classified as well. And on slide number three, the systems to support certificated professional development, that is specific for certificated. Slide number four, math summer 2015, they have, the teachers had a five-day institute, a two-day institute, and another two-day institute, which was mentioned earlier, for certificated staff. IAs are expected to assist students in math, yet they're not given the training on these subjects. Just two days ago, an instructional aide said, Rosie, what do I do? I don't know the math. The teacher is telling me to help the students, but not directing me. They want the training. They don't have the training that the teachers are getting in order for them to assist. On, on another slide, the one that's uh, slide number six, more math, academic coaches are getting training. Are those coaches available to train classified instructional assistants in the math subjects? I don't know if they're available to train classified. We obviously do have the teachers to help students, and I'm sure they could help classify. On slide number nine, technology, Tech Tuesday, is specific for certificated staff. Yet, looking at the tech flow chart for that class, I saw um, training that to help identify ways in, in technology, how it's used in the workplace, how to use menu toolbar functions, in a word processing program, copy and paste text, images plus so much more is in there. All of this is stuff that classified would love to learn. Classified are expected to know how to use computer skills. For example, head custodians who before in the past never used a computer are now being asked to, to learn how to do their work orders online. And I know there are a few head custodians that have never touched a computer. Food service employees are also doing some reports online. Health aides are updating very important information on the computer. We have special service staff that also do inputting on a computer. Without training, they have learned on their own. When are they gonna, when are they gonna get the training they need? On slide number 11, professional development identified needs. The title is not specific to certificated, yet its description is for grade level teachers even with increased grade level release days and online professional development. I didn't see that for classified. Slide number 15, priorities, positive school culture and climate. I heard something about classified on that one mentioned earlier. PBIS and restorative justice. For many of the classified, they had like a 30 minute meeting or training. I don't know what it really was. <laughs> For some it was a little longer, um, but I think that they deserve <coughs> training. I think that it's time that the board recognize that classified are part of the staff. There are many classified that need, and I, I emphasize need, and want training. I heard the word earlier, custom institute. Why don't we have a custom institute for classified too? We deserve it. What is your plan for classified? I don't, I didn't see it. Thank you. I'll, I'll respond, I was, sorry, I should have, I guess, put the certificate on all the, the titles because I was asked to come and do a specifically for certificated. I'd be more than happy at the next board meeting to come and review the classified. I, I work with the um, instructional staff, the professional development that's been provided to the classified instructional staff, and then what we have planned for next year. Thank you. Anybody else from the public on any of this? I'm sorry I was remiss in asking for 
questions and comments about the dual immersion, about the math. Um, it's a little late, but is any, does anyone have questions? Ron's still here. <laughs> or, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mr. President, Mr. President, I'm here. Yeah. I uh, the presentation that Rosa uh, just made. Uh, I support that. I support that classified employees how to get the best kind of training and in service and. <coughs> Work to help them work their way up the ladder, not just across at the last minute because they've been transferred from time to place to place. I want that uh, for us to keep in consideration that our classified employees, just like our teachers and our administrators and support staff, we deserve to treat them for the future. And that starts every day you wake up for the future. Staff development is effective. Staff development is educational. At the same time, you get pride out of your work. And people in charge or supervisors or managers also can appreciate that, that work. They need the help also. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. And that's for the record. Sorry, it's a little late, I know a little late this evening, but also a little late. I did want to make a comment on um, the presentation about dual immersion. Um, one thing, um, Veronica Meadows has been in existence for this is our 11th year, so I'll, and I believe we had um, dual immersion since our first year, so I think this is our 11th, not our 9th. But um, this is the same type of report we had tonight as we had about a year ago. This kind of um, the research shows and looking at a grander picture of the Cal state of California and the national um, information, all very interesting. Um, but it, like I said, it's kind of what we had last year. After 15 years in our, in our district, we should not need to ask for and be promised at a later date information about our that's targeted to our dual immersion programs. How are they working? You know what what is working? What's um, what are their outcomes? Who are the teachers? We were it was said something about the percentage of of um, native Spanish speakers to English speakers in a class should be 50-50, but at least a third. Um, that should be brought to the board. That should have been brought tonight. That should have been part of what you heard was, okay, this is what research shows. It should be half and half. This is what we have. Here's what we're doing to get there. And I'm, I'm just kind of disheartened that, we're, that the board is still kind of getting this gloss information and not, not the powerful stuff that should be there, the real information. We should have data on, on things at this part, at this point. Um, there was something about parental involvement. You know, my question is, so how much parental involvement are we getting? I hear that they have um, this passport program at Los Padres, so wouldn't that be a very easy way to at least get some kind of idea? You know, we had 52 parents participating and they all filled their passport or whatever, but we have had nothing like that at, at these meetings, and I think it's a real shame. Um, the Dual Immersion Foundation, which I didn't even know we had, um, it'd be interesting to know, so what are, what are they doing? What are they, what's their goals for our Dual Immersion programs? What's going on? Like I said, I knew we had a foundation, but I didn't know we had a Dual Immersion Foundation. I'm, I've been a president of SCTC for six years now. I've been coming to board meetings for at least twice that, and I, I didn't even know that existed. So I don't feel as if the board is getting really in, real in-depth information, and I'm hoping that you as board members will start to ask for some more nuts and bolts about what is happening in your district, not just a general overview of of things that maybe are great and happening in the rest of the world or the nation or even the state. So I wanted to make that comment. Thank you. 
Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, let's let's take a three-minute break. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.